Oh, hi everyone. We are recording. Thank you. I would like to call this meeting of the Town Services and Outreach Committee to order. It is September 14th. Time is 7.02 p.m. I'm going to go ahead and call on the members of the committee uh, just to make sure we can hear you and you can be heard and that you are present. And I'll also make sure that uh, Athena and Paul, who looks like he's in a Beyonce music video right now at the fan, uh, can, can hear us <laughs> as well. So, uh, Andy, Andy Steinberg. I'm here. Thank you. Shalini Balmel. Oh, who, did you say my name? Yes. Hi. Yes. Hi. <laughs> uh, Dorothy Pam. Hello, I'm here. Hello. I can help you. Can see. Yes. Paul Thank Bachman. You. Present. And Athena O'Keefe, we know we can hear you. So if, if you want to say hi, you're welcome to. Hello. All right. Great. So we've got a really exciting, I'm going to say it's an exciting agenda today because we are covering all sorts of things. So we are going to begin with public comment. Um, and we currently have two attendees with us. Um, if either would like to make public comment, public comments on ma matters within the jurisdiction of the TSO committee are welcome at this point. Uh, you can express your views for up to three minutes and we, uh, to make a public comment, you can go ahead and press the raise hand feature on your screen. So we'd like to have Jeremy be enabled to speak. And Jeremy, once you are able to unmute, you can go ahead and begin your comment and we will keep you to three minutes if that's okay. Thank you for joining us. Oh, no problem. Uh, Jeremy Anderson, 34 High Point Drive in Amherst. And uh, first, I'd just like to thank the TSO for taking the time to discuss the adoption of safety zones in Amherst. Um, Amherst is, is a beautiful place to live. Uh, we've got many wonderful cultural and recreational activities available, fantastic schools, enriching activities for residents and visitors of all age. And I, I think because of all these wonderful things that we have in our town, um, families and, and, and people from all over the country are, are moving to Amherst and, and calling it our home. Uh, this growth, uh, coupled with not, just the fact that people are trying to do more things every day, especially after the pandemic, is causing increased traffic congestion throughout our town. Uh, there's, there seems to be there's a lot more road rage and excessive speeding. Um, and it's not a problem that's unique to Amherst. Uh, but it's something that that we, we, we I think we're struggling with a bit as a community. And for four years, I, I've been working with, um, first with Scott Livingston, our retired police chief, and our fantastic acting police chief, uh, Gabriel Ting, to try to find some type of tra traffic calming solutions, uh, spe specifically to protect children at Amherst uh, daycare centers. Uh, yeah, at time again, we, we, we've come up with some ideas, uh, and, and there's just been legal and, and other obstacles. Uh, but recently, we've reached out to Mass DOT and they've informed us about the ability to create safety zones where we can limit speed limits to, to no more than 20 miles an hour so that Amherst uh, and other communities can have the flexibility to protect our, our vulnerable members, such as children, uh, um, our elderly, people at playgrounds, people throughout our, our community where they might come together and congregate. And really just would like to encourage the TSO and the town council to, to authorize the establishment of safety zones uh, in, in Amherst. And, and just thank you again so much for your time. Thank you, Jeremy. And thank you for your, uh, your comment and your work on this issue. We have two other folks in attendees. If either of you would like to make a, uh, two, two familiar faces, two counselors in the attendees list as well, if you'd like to, faces, I can't see your faces, but uh, if you'd like to make public comment as a resident, you are welcome to as well. Otherwise we will move on if that sounds all right to everybody. All right, great. Item three on the agenda, we're going to get an update from Paul on proposed revisions to bylaw 3.33, refuse collection and recyclable materials. Paul, I actually, I believe this is coming from you, but I also know that we have two of the sponsors, Shalini and Andy are here, and then we have another sponsor in the audience as well, Jennifer Taub. Uh, Paul, are you giving the update on this? I can give you a quick update. Uh, the, the RFI finally went out, and so we've given them three weeks to respond back. Um, and I shared that with Shalini and I, and I can share it with the entire committee if you'd like. Um, it's a public document, obviously. Um, so we sent it to four, the four major vendors who work in the town of Amherst, which we got from uh, Susan Waite, if you remember her. Um, and so we will, once those responses get back, we will start looking at them, and share them out. Great. Any questions or comments for Paul? Uh, Andy. 
Yeah, I did have one. Um, are there any vendors that she identified that work in Western Massachusetts or at least, you know, reasonably proximate communities that don't work in Amherst that should be included? I think she included everybody, every any uh, com any company of size that was working in Western Mass. I can I can share you I can share with you uh, what those companies are. I think I can send them to you. If I... Okay. Oh yeah. Well, so it was Republic Services, USA Waste, Casella, and Waste Management. Those are the players um, that she thought we would sh should uh, direct the RFI to. Thank you. Any other questions for Paul on refuse collection and recyclable materials? All right, Paul, thank you very much. It's exciting to see this next step being taken um, and continual progress being made on this on this work. Thank you. All right, so we're going to move on to item four on the agenda, which is speed limits. And I know this is a, a, a broad topic to put on an agenda, but this was something that we actually have been able to narrow down. And I had asked, um, I'd asked Anika to put it on the agenda for this meeting. We've heard a lot about speed limits and, you know, there's a lot of a lot of variables at play when we think about how we can how we can influence and impact speed limits in town, all of which I believe I don't believe we have any streets left. I don't think without speed limits, I could be wrong on that. Don't quote me. But um, for for the most part, it's been a challenge, I think, for us as counselors to navigate the speed limit issue. One of the things that was on TSO's agenda from the prior council as a carryover item was the uh, acceptance of provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 90 uh, sections 18B. And what this law allows is for the establishment of what are called safety zones, which would have, um, which would need to meet uh, safety criteria, but then would could mean a 20 mile per hour safety zone. This ties back to, if folks remember all the conversations that people were bringing in around um, speeding around uh, daycare centers and around other locations that have quote unquote vulnerable populations, right? So um, this is something that the town has not uh, accepted the provisions of yet, but that we could recommend to the council that we accept. I wanna be clear that, and I know that Paul will have more to say on this. I just wanted to give an intro since I had asked for it to be on the agenda here. This does not, accepting the provisions is step one of many, right? There are lots of other things we would need to do in order to change those speed limits in front of places that if they meet the criteria are deemed uh, safety zones. So. I don't want folks to think that if we recommend the adoption of this, these provisions of mass general law, um, that automatically things will shift. But I do want people to know that this is the first step that we would need to take in order to take all of those additional steps. Um, so Paul had a really great memo in the packet, the two page memo on the safety zones if folks had a chance to read it. But right now, before we turn it over for questions, um, I want to ask Paul if you'd like to give an overview of this. And after that, I will, um, I'm will. i happy to make a motion. So Paul, would you like to, to do yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, you, you captured it. And I think the, the first action is to accept the statutes. We checked with the town clerk who reviewed all the sections of the state laws that we've accepted. This is not one. So we have to, the council has to accept this as a, so that we can take the next step. That's the first order of business. Are there any questions from committee members about this, this statute or the process that we would need to follow or anything like that? Dorothy. Um, is there an idea of like how many safety zones one would have in a town of the size of Amherst? Like we go to be like five, uh, like around, around the schools and the, and the, and the preschools and maybe around a senior center. Um, or is there some kind of, you know, sense of balance of how these things go? So we, we haven't done an analysis of that. We do know, I mean, all the schools have safety zones already. The last one was Fort River, hadn't had one for a while, but until about two years ago, three years ago, I think. Um, so that's, but that's under a different state law. We're allowed to do it because of a, of a public school. Um, so, you know, there, of course, there's Cushman uh, Daycare Center. There, there are other uh, areas as well that have sort of institutional type daycare centers. The question will be: what We, I have a family daycare. Do you want to do it for this section? You know, there's one on on um, Snell Street. Uh, there are others in other areas. So it's, it'll be up a decision by the council um, where you want to put in these these safety zones. 
And it would have to meet the criteria, Paul, that's laid out, right? The minimum safety criteria of land yeah. is likely to attract vulnerable users and contains areas that have potential conflicts between motor vehicles and those users. Mm -hmm. So it's it's possible that not everywhere would hit those minimum criteria mm -hmm. and, and the council would need to approve them as keepers of the public way, mm -hmm. which I believe, I think Paul, you had mentioned would best be done through a, a traffic study. Right, I think it requires an engineering study to begin. Yeah. Dorothy, did that answer your question? Um, yeah, so it's a combination of vulnerable population and features that might be complicated. Um, so it's not how many people are there use it. It's really the combination that there are some vulnerable and the road has a problem or has a feature that could cause a problem. Uh, right. That, that's reasonable. Yeah, I would estimate like a daycare that's on a road that's, you know, way tucked back and doesn't have speeding cars wouldn't necessarily yeah. qualify right. versus a, yeah. That yeah. would, I, but again, the engineering study is a part of that process. And so we, someone who wanted a safety zone established would, we'd go through that process with them. Yep. To, yeah. Okay, good. Sounds good. Any other questions for Paul? Um, okay, with that, I'm going to, I'm going to attempt a motion, Athena, and I didn't send it to you and I apologize because I'm going to, I'm going to say it right from the head here, uh, right from the heart, Athena. All right. I would like to recommend that the town services and outreach committee recommend to the town council, the adoptions of, uh, or the adoptions of the provisions of mass general law, chapter 90, section 18 B. I think it's just entirety of 18 B. And I need a second and then we'll vote if I have a second. Second, Shalini. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and call the vote. Uh, Dorothy Pam. Yes. Thank you. Shalini Balmil. Yes. Andy Steinberg. Yes. And I am a yes as well. Uh, Andy, question? Yeah, I just, I, I didn't wanna uh, mix the two up, but I just wanted to point out that when the last TSO, which I'm the, uh, one of the holdover members, mm -hmm. talking about speed limits, we were also talking about trying to uh, spend some time understanding what our options are with speed limits on other streets. And um, I don't think that this council has time to deal with this issue, but I, it was one of my disappointments and we were in the disappoint of a couple of uh, uh, constituents who've reached out to me of the subject over the years. Um, so I would certainly urge that it be put in the carryover memo because I, I think we've been very neglectful of an important issue. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a good point, Andy. Thank you. Thank you for reminding us of that. Um, any other thoughts before you move on to no that was that was breezy dang all right <laughs> moving right along um we're gonna move on to we're on number five five out of eleven y'all and it is 7 15 i don't mean to to you know cast a spell here but all right town manager appointments paul we have two appointments on the docket would you like to walk us through those two sets of appointments yes the first one is for the community preservation act committee uh it's katie zobel who's has already served one term, um, was uncertain about serving a second term, but then has come back and said, yes, I do want to take on, continue serving, which is a great, great thing for us because she's already had one term. So uh, that's a reappointment for the CPA committee. The other is for the DRB, which is, these are uh, seats that are held by members of committees. So the Historical Commission and Planning Board have reorganized. They've identified the people they want to serve in their, uh, for their committees on the Design Review Board. So it's Patricia Oth for the Historical Commission and Karen Winter for the Planning Board. Awesome. Thank you. Any questions for Paul on these appointments? All right. With that, I will make a motion first that I move that the Town Services and Outreach Committee recommend to the Town Council the Town Manager appointments of the Town Manager appointment of Katie Zobel to the Community Preservation Act Committee for a term to expire June 30th, 2026. Do I have a second? I second it. Thank you, Dorothy, seconded by Dorothy. And I'm gonna call the vote. This time we're gonna go with Andy Steinberg first. Yes. Thank you, keeping everybody on their toes today. Shalini Balmillan. Yep, yes. 
<laughs> I'm counting. Yeah, that's fine. And Dorothy Pam. Yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, second motion. Oh, and I vote yes as well. Thank you. So I remembered. All right. Next up, we have, I move that the town services and outreach committee recommend to the town council, the town manager appointments of Patricia Auth and Karen Winter to the design review board, each for a term to expire June 30th, 2024. Do I have a second? I second it. Second, Dorothy Pam. Thank you. This time we're going to go to a vote starting with Shalini Balmilne. Yes. And Dorothy Pam. Yes. And Andy Steinberg. Yes. And I am a yes as well. Thank you. Thank Boom you. and done. All right, Paul, nicely done. Thank you for getting those. Those are two really important committees. So yes. appreciate the work there. Uh, item six on the agenda. I believe Shalini, this is you on a, the, with the community engagement plan proposal. Would you like to uh, walk us through it? Amazing. Yes. <laughs> so to refresh everyone's memory, uh, we I had made a presentation long ago uh, for a process and a plan for community engagement. And what I heard back from TSO was that, can you give us an actionable item that we can then discuss and vote on? So I have a motion, um, which we can definitely edit, adapt, but maybe I'll start with the bigger picture, what the motion is, and then show you the instrument or the checklist for community engagement. And then I can go in deeper into the plan, why this is important and uh, go through all of the steps that we can discuss then. Does that make sense? Are you saying that you're going to make the motion first or make the presentation first? The presentation, but kind of point out where we are heading with this. Does that, that make sense? Sure, yep, that sounds good. Um. So, Athena, do you want to share or do you want me to share? I can pull it up. Okay, thank you. So, just the motion page. Oh, you want the motion, not the plan, correct? Um, would it make sense to give them a sense of the motion and the and the checklist, like a high level view? Yeah, if that's where you want to start, I'll grab it. because the plan can be intimidating. It's like 17 pages long. So this is sort of kind of the motion that uh, we recommend to the town council that we adopt a checklist for community engagement that would guide the discussion and engagement in each town council committee when drafting new bylaws or policies or making changes to existing ones and require the completed checklist to be submitted to the council along with the final bylaw policy being recommended by the committee. And so if we can move down, and this is definitely open to being changed or whatever as we discuss what, but that was kind of the idea. And then the, the checklist would look something like this. So every like, we're already doing something like this in the CRC where we have a checklist of for you know who's being impacted and so forth, but this is just taking it um, right from the beginning till the end. What are some steps that we can take? And of course, every committee has an option to modify the questions that are relevant to them, but it's just creating this process where we really start in a systematic manner of defining what is the problem that we're solving for? And so then there are these recommended, it's not that every committee has to go through every question, but it's really like getting the committee to discuss what are the existing issues or challenges that we're trying to address? Are the specific pain points? Clarify the purpose and goals. Um, is, there, is this a priority for the council? Is it part of the town manager goals? who's initiated this, like, is it coming from the planning board, from the staff? You know, that would get, get, give us a sense, like if a staff is coming back and saying, this is really important, then it, you know, it's, it signals to us that, oh, we really, you know, we need to really pay attention to this. Not that we should not pay attention if it's coming from a counselor, but, you know, gives us an idea. And Dorothy, Pam, Dorothy. Oh, um, I went to the site and I printed out, um, the community engagement. Oh, 
Yes. That's what was on the site. And I printed it out and I read over it and I took lots of notes. Good. So I think that many of the elements that are on this thing are in uh -huh. the big plan, but I don't yeah. believe I received this. This is, it's just part of that. So what I did was the checklist is in the plan, but I didn't want to overwhelm everyone. So I just wanted to say that this is what we are voting on. And then the plan is kind of like explaining. And so the checklist is a part of the plan. It's okay. one of the items in the plan. So, so, and I did see many, many checklists. So I, I would yeah. say that um, my response to the whole thing uh -huh. was that um, I, and this is, some of this is personal. I have problems with some of the jargon. I like one of them is the use of the word stakeholders. stakeholders However, right. I loved the questions that you asked. And you mm -hmm. have that it in in under the various stages there are uh, maybe a hundred questions, and what? they were really good, real lots of really really good questions. Mm -hmm. Um, but I I found that some of the terminology, which mm -hmm. I know the professional terminology, is kind of off putting if like a regular person reads it. Um, so I had mm -hmm. kind of wanted to discuss that a little bit. Um, sure. But I do. Um, I could see. There's, there's an awful lot of questions, but if you boil it down to just a few questions, it's useless because there were so many very specific questions, which were the result, I think, of actual work and experience. You mm -hmm. know, you do something and realize, whoops, we blew that one. We should have asked right. this. We should have right. checked out that. So right. um, I, I don't know. That's, a, that's an awful lot of questions, though. So because this right now, if the blue is on the words post-engagement, so this is just the list Maybe that isn't that. Maybe that blue doesn't mean anything. Um, okay, why don't you show the whole hold so I can see how many? What do we know and not know? Okay, so this is pretty much mm -hmm. some of the questions taken mm -hmm. from the thing. Yet there, keep 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 going so I can see. Is it? And then okay, step right, three, right. Do we need to? And do we need to? Is the level of engagement? Of course, we need to engage in. So, okay. but what is the level of engagement? Um, because some issues, like we discussed earlier, in GOL may not in, require mm -hmm. a lot of engagement. But then, as we have experienced ourselves, that we think we don't need engagement, but then we do end up finding that and whether and the engagement is not just with residents but it could also be with other committees like TAC like, or yeah. ECAC or you know so at what point uh, so just articulating which where where is the expertise it could be committees mm -hmm. and later on I even recommend and that's something we have to build more systematically is our relationship with the universities and colleges because right you know, like the Energy Transitions Institute is like yeah. a multidisciplinary pool right. of researchers who are doing cutting edge research. So we need to be like in connection with them. So when mm -hmm. we're doing planning and all, who can we pull in from there or Well, energy? I think we have, two, we have two kinds of engagement. One is what you're talking mm -hmm. about right now, um, contacting experts. Uh, a mm -hmm. lot of the report was really about um, contacting the people who live in the people. town. Yeah. And that's an area where we still have to do a lot of work because um, mm -hmm. we have a lot of new technical ways, which work for a lot of people, but mm -hmm. actually meetings that going to where they live still is the thing that works the most. Um, I'm just afraid that with that, that if you're in the context now that I just learned that mm -hmm. this is a checklist that groups would be required to turn in mm -hmm. with a proposal Um that it's it might be too overwhelming. So there might be two mm -hmm. levels of questions. I would mm -hmm. never say throw out the ones that aren't true for everything because I really did. I liked a lot of those questions, but some can be bold faced and some mm -hmm. can be regular. And bold faced would be every project you got to answer this question. And some of the mm -hmm. others, it would really depend upon what's going on. You know, mm -hmm. so they could be relevant. They could not be relevant. Um, but it, right. if it's too overwhelming, then some people are just going to check, you know, or just not take it seriously. And there's a lot of good stuff here. There's a lot of good right. stuff to avoid right. problems in the future, but you don't want it to be a roadblock, right. you know? Right, so that, right. So, so those, yeah, no, Dorothy, those are really good points. So now that you have a sense of this, what might be the best way to move forward? Do we want to focus our time on, I think the purpose is important, like just all of us on the same page so we can go to the bigger plan and focus on, why are we doing this? And then 
I think I like your suggestion, Dorothy, that we highlight some of the questions which we as TSO can see, and, and many of us are in multiple committees, so we can see mm -hmm. from different committees' point of view which questions would be important. And maybe we come to the realization that every committee might have to do that for themselves, like go through the questions mm -hmm. and highlight, okay, these are the questions we're gonna attend. And you mm -hmm. know what, there might be a place where we end up saying, we would love to actually go and engage the, you know, the, affordable housing or this or that, but we don't have the staff or right. to help right. us do it. And I think even just writing that down in the report, we do not have the resources. Every time we're doing that, it's letting the people know that we you've thought about it, but we don't have the staff. And at some point, maybe there will be a communication community participation hmm. officer who can be assigned. Once we find that there are a lot of projects that are requiring this, maybe we do need a half-time participation officer who's helping the town council to engage uh, with the community. Yeah, but see, the, the phrase, um, the, the title of this is called community engagement. So mm -hmm. I'm just thinking not really of contacting the specialists, which obviously is a good thing to do. I was thinking right. of contacting the regular people, the people. voters, the residents mm -hmm. who often... They don't, they're not reading the newspaper. They're not tuning mm -hmm. in six meetings right. a week like we are. And they really right. don't know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But there are sometimes they should know because yeah. it affects them personally. And how do we do the outreach so that the people who are personally affected have a chance right. to tell us what we might need to know? Right. So and that's, and that's, every, I mean, the community includes, I, I think the purpose is to make, to have a decision making process that is holistic, that is including the voices of all the different stakeholders, and also drawing upon the experience of the experts. And so maybe the better title would be stakeholder, because stakeholder just means everyone who's impacted, but you don't like that. Uh, so I don't want to put that in there. So, you know, that's debatable what we want to put yeah, on top. Well, maybe you I'm, need two things, but if you're talking about reaching regular people for their responses, both. it should be yeah. written in a friendly way. That's all. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so I'm let's put that as a, I'm going to put that in the parking lot as a question to answer. And Anna, you had your hand up. Yeah, I, I, I'm not bothered by the term stakeholders. Um, For me, it, I, I understand it because I think, you know, I, as a resident, mm -hmm. am a stakeholder in, in things that happen in my area, right? Or that, that impacts me. Um, I also, I, I think what I'm struggling with, Shalini, can you clarify for mm -hmm. me the way that the proposal read it was that the committee was going to be doing this, the answering these questions, not mm -hmm. the sponsors of a bylaw. Is that correct? Uh, the sponsors can lead the discussions. Like many of these things might be taken on by the sponsors, uh, but it's the committee that like you, the sponsors have to be answerable to the committee and the committee needs to have that discussion. Okay. But it could be led by the sponsors, and especially like in terms of like, for instance, with the waste hauler, you know, I'm going to take the lead on making sure that the survey, there's a survey instrument that's created. So that would be on me, but I'll run it by the committee for sure to get feedback. But so some of these pieces, and that's why I like I put in the checklist led by or what was it? What does it say? I think it says lead person and complete by when you know sort of just that was suggested because in different items we might have different lead people and then the analysis what I learned from CRC having done the analysis myself that it's better to have two people but then without making it a committee or a work group or something I don't know we'll have to ask Athena how to do that I was thinking maybe the other person could be either a staff person or it could be a person from another committee, like a counselor from another committee, would that be considered, Athena, a, a, a work group if it's two counselors but from different committees? If um, if there are two counselors designated to do um, a task on behalf of the council, then it's considered a subcommittee. Mm. If the if the council saying that you know you you two counselors or three counselors go and do this thing for us and then report back, mm -hmm. then you've created a subcommittee and they need to okay. um, follow the opening so, law. 
So if it's not the town council, but let's say TSO decides that I'm going to do the analysis and then I pass it on because you need like inter-rater reliability. So then I pass on the document to a second counselor and then they go over and do the ratings or maybe two of us do it independently, but don't talk to each other. And then finally it comes together. So I think where I'm, where I'm struggling, uh -huh. I think what you've created is, is a really good list of kind of like ideal state. Um, mm -hmm. and I think where, where I am challenged is I think that this would, it's, it's so comprehensive mm -hmm. that I think we'd get through one thing a year. And I think that's where I'm struggling is because I think mm -hmm. that this is, it's an incredible amount of effort and work. And I think mm -hmm. that we've seen CRC do this in an incredibly robust way, but CRC is right. also creating a new bylaw as a committee which right. is not what every committee does. And they've been doing it and it's take and, and rightfully so I'm not faulting CRC at all, but it's, they've been working on it all year and it came yeah. in. Performed. And so right. I think that's where I struggle is like, how do we make sure that we can engage our community effectively while still mm -hmm. being effective and get, getting things done as a committee. Um, and so, because I also think one of my, one of my challenges that ties into that is mm -hmm. a lot of these things are subjective right? At what point can you say, okay, we have reached out and, you know, mm -hmm. at what point can we say, yeah. you know, okay, we have heard from the community. Some people like this, some people don't, we want to do it. And so mm -hmm. we, while we've heard from this community, this part of the, mm -hmm. the community, we don't agree and we yeah. agree with this part, right? So like, I think I, I am, I'm trying to figure out where's the, the, mm -hmm. when is the box checked, right? Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. How do we, sure that we're still get like how much time do we allot to each of these things and I know it's not a matter of saying like I did one hour of community engagement I that is absolutely not the answer but right. how do we make sure that we've done our jobs in terms of community engagement but that we're still able to do our jobs in terms of getting things done? where's that medium place um I, okay. yeah so I think having a like what articulating in which we you know some of these questions as like maybe Dorothy Baum is saying some of these questions are just essential to every conversation and any bylaw that we've revised or changed we have like why are we doing this and even Paul will say like what is your ultimate goal so I think articulating what is the existing challenges that we're trying to address and you know these can happen pretty quickly because whoever's sponsoring if the staff is doing it they'll come and say this is why we want this or if we're doing the waste hauler. We have a specific goal why we want to do this. And I think it's important upfront to ask about, you know, do we have the town staff and time? Because that's where Paul, maybe, maybe the staff can't do it, but Paul has to then let us know that realistically, and I mean, we still, it's still a fairly new government, right? Even though it's a second term we're still pretty new in terms of, and we're creating all these bylaws and processes and policies where I think there's definitely scope for improving. So this plan has been created for the purpose of having us start a conversation about how can we be thoughtful given the limited resources and time we have and and even if we can write down that we've thought through, like you said, like how much community engagement is enough. And so for something like rental registration, that was a huge impact on many people. So of course it involved, okay, we have to hear from the landlords. We have to hear from neighbors, tenants, uh, staff, you know, so that required a very conscious reaching out and engaging stakeholders at that level. So waste hauler by law, we are like, we want to hear from waste haulers, which we're going to hear through the RFI. And we want to hear from residents how, what is, and so we're going to create a survey and we're going to do, have a listening session, for instance. You know, so we have identified those are two ways and the committee can decide, I don't know if that's enough. And it is sort of meant to be a reiterative process. So maybe by December, we're not done with it. And we realize that, oh, we need a more robust reach out. And so we will have to then transfer, and, you know, put, so it's kind of, you. So sometimes we can start off with like, okay, this is all we need. But once we hear from people, we might realize, okay, we do need to step back and it may not end up done by the end of my term, but then how can we leave it in a place that it can be then taken over by the committee 
in the next term. So, so then something a, like so so when you're talking about a a listening forum, sorry, mm -hmm. my question. Do you mean like so? I think this is what has come up in the past when we've talked about this this plan is mm -hmm. that, like are we talking about publishing a notice? Are we talking about that mm -hmm. kind of because? when we, I mean, there are financial implications for that. There are logistical implications of that. Like, I think that mm -hmm. there, I'm curious what that means. And if that's part of the process in a formal way, mm -hmm. I think we need to understand how much is this going to cost us, but also how much time it's going to take from our staff, from ourselves as counselors, from like, I think that mm -hmm. that's the other kind of budgeting of time and resources that I'd, I'd like to see with mm -hmm. this. If, if the, some of those outreach methods are happening in a really formal way. Um, cause I feel like I, I, I learned how much it costs to put one of those things in the Gazette the other day that we have to do for the, oh, yeah, that no, and that, yeah, so we're not calling it, that's why we're not calling it a public forum because that has legal requirements and expectations. Uh, but that's why I think Athena told me for our waste hauler, don't call it a public forum because that is very formal, but a listening session would be more like we send the write up to all the district counselors and to the town staff. So they put it on the website on the, you know, if there's an engaged website created for that, we put it on that, we put it on social media and, you know, use the channels we have and the contacts we have to uh, do it, but it doesn't have to be a public forum unless it's legally required. Uh, Andy. Yeah, I mean, I share your comment earlier, and it was probably the first reaction that I had too, which is that, uh, well, this is really uh, fascinating and uh, uh, very comprehensive piece of work. Uh, if we do this, mm -hmm. uh, even the initial thought process that's required in step one, uh, for everything that we're doing, mm -hmm. we're not going to get very much done because we're spending so much time. We're we're making our job mm -hmm. counselors so much more complex to get there. I guess the second thing that um, I was uh, thinking through with this is that some of the questions in step one are getting at things that I would like the council to be considering, mm -hmm. or it makes even a referral to a committee when somebody right. comes forward with a proposal. I've mm. uh, said this uh, several different uh, times mm -hmm. during council meetings, that council ought to just not be nice to the two sponsors or three sponsors, but mm -hmm. ought to be thinking critically about whether right. this is something that the council and its committees um, mm -hmm. are prepared and should spend the time developing because uh, mm -hmm. of, of all of the obvious reasons that come forward. So I'm not, right. you know, some yeah. of it seemed like it, it really belongs in a different place before there's uh -huh. even consideration yeah. of a process, whether there's a consideration of a bylaw. Mm -hmm. So I think that... Um, that was uh, um, something that, and, and then I, I started thinking about it through some of the examples of bylaws that um, we've, you know, are now considering or have recently considered, and uh, you know, I, I just, uh, you know, there were a whole lot of things that I was wondering about because. You know, it's becoming obvious for the finance committee is, is it as hard as CRC worked on this. And as much as the, you mm -hmm. get, the CRC did and the amount of uh, engagement that was involved and the listening that was involved, there are still constituents who are raising mm -hmm. um, serious questions that have been really troubling the finance committee. Um, and... Uh, so I was trying to figure out why that happened and does would this really address that problem? And I don't have an answer to that uh, because it's so complex and mm -hmm. I just haven't had time to think through those steps and finance is really just trying to, to grapple with the issues uh, uh, that have come up from uh, uh, various uh, stakeholders. Mm -hmm. on, 
on on the bylaw that we're dealing with most strongly right now, which is rental registration. So for all yeah. of the reasons, I, I guess I am troubled by uh, the motion, which seems to make it more than a model, but in the requirement. And uh, mm -hmm. I, 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 a uh, little bit concerned about, um, uh, they have to go back to the motion, but I think the language that makes it, yeah. uh, that it, that there's an expectation mm -hmm. um, in any way that um, committee has to do this, I think is going to just uh, weigh down our process um, to the point where uh, I don't think that committees are going to be able to ever advance anything and get it through a process and get it done and back to the uh, to the counselor, as you said, on a maybe mm -hmm. one a year. So uh, can I answer, respond to that? So there are a couple of things you said. So I, I'm going to address the first point, which was like some of these questions could be passed on as a package to the town council when a proposal is being brought forward either by staff or sponsors or wherever it's coming from. And before we send it off to a committee, you know, what are the challenges and who's sponsoring this? What, clarify the purpose and then finding out, do we have the staff and other resources to deal with this issue right now? Or should it be three years from now or whatever? So I think that's an excellent suggestion that that whole thing be packaged uh, and put in as, because I remember when we've had discussions in town council, we all kind of say, yeah, let's send it and, and the committee can decide whether they want to or not, but then we never really have a process of doing that. We just dive into it. So I think having this sort of questions allows us to spend at least like 20 minutes or 15 minutes or maybe 10 minutes to get a sense of what is the problem we're solving for? Do we have the resources to do it? Something like that, or is it required legally? Or so if everyone is agreement, I'm happy to separate this out. And then that whole, the responses that came from there can be just plugged in. So now when the committee is discussing it, they already have the answers to the first set of questions that what is the problem we're solving for? And I cannot emphasize how important that first step is because Mostly, even with community engagement, we are jumping into solutions. Even when we're doing community engagement, instead of asking people what are their challenges, what are their lived experiences with what uh, you know, whatever we're talking about, how often do they walk on that street, or what are how, how do they feel safe, or if you talk about you know waste hauler. Uh, do you already compost, or have you ever thought about it? What are the challenges in doing that? And like without asking what we go to commit community for is do you want compost universal composting or not and then if they say yes we want it and then we don't do it because we didn't have the money to staff someone to do it then the community is unhappy you wasted our time asking us these questions and getting our feedback and not doing anything about it so i think answer, asking the right questions what are we problem we're solving for first without jumping into solutions is a very important first step. And can I just finish the others? Or did you want to talk to this specific thing? I guess there's one other thing that I'm just going to follow up on and then we should mm -hmm. put on on the spot, unfortunately, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, and that is uh, the streetlight policy. Uh, there was a very um, important purpose of bringing that forward because the dark sky issue is a significant issue. And uh, I think there was also a question about whether street lights are affecting um, homeowners because mm -hmm. of uh, if they are close to uh, home or particularly a bedroom, what, what, is, what is the effect of that? Uh, but there was a lot, of, you know, as we have um, delved into this uh, consideration, what we've been hearing uh, more about is, well, what about uh, the safety on the street level? And uh, so all of a sudden through the uh, process that we already have, 
I think that we've actually identified an issue that uh, really concerned a fair number of people who are present members of TAC and former members of its predecessor committee. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, I, and we are paying attention and the co-sponsors are paying attention. Do we need this policy in order to move the street light discussion into that additional realm mm -hmm. because we are just with what we did already we got there yeah but andy we got there after going back and forth back and forth it could have been that we had reached out and i know the sponsors already did reach out to um tack and and to the public generally and we received further information, but it wasn't a formalized process. This is not for lighting itself. This is has been an issue with all other committees where we are reaching out to whether it's ECAC or other committees, we kind of reach out to them or sometimes the sponsors reach out. It's not a set process where we are officially reaching out, either the chair or the sponsor reading out officially to the committee, getting their feedback, having the discussion and then reporting back to the committee that this is what we accepted or did not accept and here's why. Is I'm not saying we should always agree with the thing, but there needs to be a formalized process where we are responding back to that committee and it's happening in the right uh, order of things so that often we are doing it and then we have to roll, take three steps back. And so the, and of course it may still happen because it's an iterative process. So it's still possible we have a process and we're still gonna go back. However, the more we can systemize the pro the steps that we need to take and formally acknowledge the other committees that are working hard and make sure that we are responding, by sending them, this is what we are finally doing and give them a chance to give us further feedback, the more we are gonna be doing this in a smoother way. And it's being documented because there'll always be residents who don't agree with what, but we will have written down, here is why we're not like in the rental registration, we had a whole section on environmental, that was one of the goals. And we even got the ECAC and their committee's comments and so forth, what we can do. However, when we went through the process and the town told us how cumbersome and we heard from landlords how cumbersome this is going to be. Already it's seeming really cumbersome. Now you want us to fill all this data. Then we decided, okay, we're not going to include it. And the town suggested that we can get that sort of information regardless of them having to do it. So that, so, you know, but all I'm saying is that if we have a process, it's just documenting it so that we can always come back to the community. And there's this, the, the community knows that there was a process that was followed and they'll still be unhappy, but I would feel much better that we did our due diligence, we reached out and it is endless. Like Anna said, how much is enough? And so, but the more we can do it as systematically as possible and the places where we can't do it, we're still writing because of the budget deadline or blah, 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 we are needing to cut it short. And this is the extent to which we did it. We held meetings in our in our community committee discussions. So, but wait, so the first part was, do we want to finalize that for, I'll keep that as a note that can we take a part of that, that part one and put it, shift it into town council discussion. So that was one question. Uh, CRC, you mentioned that you're hearing serious concerns now, Andy, and so what is the point of doing this process? We heard those concerns regarding what it's going to cost and whether it's equitable and whatnot, uh, even through the engagement process. That was part, we did hear it. However, it is a complex issue. And so what the engagement did do is at least for me personally, and I hope for other people as well, it did create more empathy for tenants who we realized that they don't feel empowered to complain. And there were so, so many other things that were wrong, which is why we I feel more uh, strongly now because of that feedback that we do need a system where we're not relying on uh, inspection by complaint. So all that to say that 
just because we do a process doesn't mean that everyone's going to be happy. They'll still be. And that's because some of these issues are complex and they're competing needs of different stakeholders. So we, that we, all the more reason we need to have a systematic way to listen to landlords, to listen to tenants, to listen to neighbors um, and, and be able to balance those different viewpoints. All right. The last, yeah. Yeah. Last thing, requirement or not, That's should we make clock, it? What's that? So you're going to make me start using a clock. <laughs> okay, I, okay, okay. I'll, I'll answer the requirement question um, afterwards, give you no, a, go give ahead, a go break. Ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, just, that's a good question. Do we make it a requirement or not? I think the requirement is just that we use a checklist, just like we're doing it in CRC, kind of. Uh, but we make it a requirement and then it's up to the committee which questions they're going to answer. We're not, I'm not saying every single question has to be knocked out, but we want to have a template and every one of us is coming from very different places and our experiences and background. And this is giving us a shared process and language. And it's up to the committee which questions they are going to address. Okay, over. Okay, so I think you're getting at a question that I have around requirement and maybe a, a a pitch to you. So uh -huh. my, first, my first thought was, and I'm I'm going to really try to stay away from discussing policies that weren't on our agenda to discuss today. So um, mm. I think one of my hypothetical questions, not referring to any policy in particular, is, mm. you know, how do you, who quote unquote wins when experts disagree with each other, right? Because mm -hmm. we see it time and time again that, and, and who defines an expert? Right. Mm -hmm. Because I think that we we have to navigate these kinds of questions when we're looking mm -hmm. at a checklist like this, if it's becoming an adopted rule, um, mm -hmm. you know, I think who gets to define an expert that's so mm -hmm. subjective. And so I really I'm challenged by that. And mm -hmm. I also think, you know, what do you do when you weigh health impacts on one side versus health impacts on another side? And I and, mm -hmm. and so I, I I'm challenged by that um, mm -hmm. because I, I think that it's it's we already can go in those circles. Um, what I would like to to uh, to propose to you is mm -hmm. this is an incredible one i'm confused about how we as a council with our existing processes would adopt this is it something uh -huh. that goes into our rules of procedure is it something mm -hmm. that, right so how do we because this feels like it's a rule right we're saying that this is a rule we want the council to follow so wouldn't it go under the rules of procedure as a as an engagement platform and so then my my question is this is incredibly robust. And I, I have to say, I'm not comfortable adopting this as a rule because if it applies mm -hmm. to everything that we are passing, either a mm -hmm. new policy or revision policy, we would, uh, we would have to do this for things that we, we, that are, are incredibly routine. Um, and how do we navigate that when it takes the amount of time that it takes? And those are the things we need to do to keep the town functioning. So, mm -hmm. so I think that there, there are, there are questions I have about the applicability of this and where it mm -hmm. does apply. Um, you know, I'm thinking about water and sewer regs, right? Mm -hmm. We spent a lot of time on those. And Andy, you referenced streetlights, even without this process, we've been dealing with streetlights for over a year, right? So I think that there's, there's a lot of things that I have questions about how long, how long this takes when it's not something like streetlights, which are functioning now, in my opinion, not well, but are functioning now. And how do we make it better versus we need to update our water regs that haven't been updated in 50 years. Mm -hmm. And now we have to go through this checklist. We can't take a year to do that. So right. how do we navigate it? So I'm curious mm -hmm. if you'd be able to simplify this in a way mm -hmm. that has a much smaller number of rules or a much smaller number of guidelines and mm -hmm. folks can look within it for ideas of best practice, but the mm -hmm. actual rule itself is not as cumbersome on the committee or the, or the sponsors, because right. I, what I worry about is that this is going to dissuade people from bringing forward ideas. And that's, I firmly believe that that is our mm -hmm. job. Our job is to bring forward. Yeah, ideas yeah, yeah. It. for sure. So how so, do we, make sure, hang on one second, okay. please. How do we yeah, make yeah. sure yeah. that mm -hmm. we are not adding requirements to folks that they're not able to do in something that's not a full-time job? Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. So um, in terms of the questions that were asked, the last one, I would say, how do we make it work? I think we should, dis I'm going to put that question at the end because I want us to really work through all the different pieces. Again, like not arrive at the solution before we've had a discussion around what is the purpose of this? How can we use it? 
How can it help us make better decisions and processes? So I'm going to hold that question because I'm totally open to how, you know, what what's the language going to be for the motion? That's where you're getting at. Um, but I go back to the That's first question. I'm saying that the problem that I'm trying to solve for is that this is going yeah. to take too much time for counselors and Yeah, yeah. And that's what we will we will edit and make it work after we've come to a consensus about what exactly can a checklist like this serve and then how to trim it down in a way that it's gonna be helpful and not demotivating people, right? Wait, so can you hold? Okay, so we'll come. That's the third question. So I'm going to come to that. The first one was who wins when they're competing? Who defines the experts? Uh, I think if we have two different experts, we need to bring in all. Like we need to have the diverse perspective. So it's not trying to say one over the other. And the whole point is to give air to the different points of view that are there and create a formal. But in terms of practicality, when we have experts, experts in our committees like PAC or ECAC or CSSJC and all, the idea would be that we do include their expertise in uh, what we're hearing. And it may be, uh, or, and then the second level of experts is like, which I'm hoping that we can build more formal pathways with is UMass and our colleges where they have people who are already studying road safety or they're studying the environment or they study like the ETI has this multidisciplinary group of people studying um, how to make climate change fair and fast and so forth. So uh, I don't think the idea is to push one set of experts, the idea is to bring, and the same thing with when they're competing health needs, we need to, like just because they're competing doesn't mean we don't ask the question, we have to ask a question, especially if it's competing, we need to raise awareness of those competing things because what happens is we end up making a decision because we're seeing this one group is really getting impacted, but then the other group is like, but you didn't hear us. And so by making that conversation, you know, bringing it to light, I think at least we can in our conscience be able to explain that here is why we need this decision, even though it feels like, and hopefully we can come up with a third way that is helping here and here. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Dorothy? Um, I would like to uh, add an experience from the teaching world. Mm -hmm. uh, after years of faculty trying to learn how to be scientific in their grading and giving points for their activities and making it fair, mm -hmm. um, I have been attending many um, workshops. This is going to be, I think, the third year at HC on equity. And mm -hmm. it's on forget the points. Mm -hmm. That grading is actually an art and that you have to consider all kinds of things and you'll consider more of this or some of that at different mm -hmm. times for different people. Mm -hmm. And this is very hard for some people who like the certainty of the points. But of course, when you give points, you're already making decisions. Um, you, some of the stuff that you've been saying recently sounds much more like what perhaps a consultant's firm would be doing. And Paul tells us when we need one and when there's money mm -hmm. for it and it gets it in the budget. And a consultant is not the same as a town counselor. Um, so a town, but what's similar between a professor grading and a town counselor is that we have to make decisions with many, many small parts and that we will each give different weight to different things because we are all in a way different and we will, you know, consult. So I don't think that the requirement is going to work. However, I mm -hmm. really like your questions. I find them very, very useful. And I think that if it's requiring, it's going to cause a, a, a log jam that we can't, that we just won't be able to deal with. Mm -hmm. But I really think that to, uh, for us to consult and to, you know, individually read the questions and maybe decide to bring a few of them to the meeting. That's, doable but this having us do all mm -hmm. of this is, is, is just not not something that we can do as town councillors I don't think so yeah so yeah no I, I hear what you're saying Dorothy I I'm not actually coming at this from a consultant point of view but more human-centered approach which is being used for coming up with social innovations and how can 
uh, towns. And I looked at, I have the, re, you know, the links to other towns and whatnot. But of course, you know, I'm not comparing because we don't have the resources. And I think the idea is only to um, also in listening to stakeholders. I think now I'm going to why this is important. And mm -hmm. I spoke with, I did send this out to a couple of different stakeholders, especially stakeholders as in people, leaders in our town who think differently from how I think often on issues. So I actually mm -hmm. reached out to people who think differently to get their feedback. And uh, I did change a few things. And one of the suggestions from them was make it a requirement. Because if you don't make it a requirement, then people are not going to use it. And so that was one of the feedback that came from the community. I mean, just one person, of course, but I think that is a sentiment that I'm hearing from multiple people that I've spoken with that we don't, uh, that we are rushing through things. And I understand that time is important, but then in that rush, we are missing out steps. And then we come back and we have to redo some of the stuff and people are not happier. So why not do it? It's still going to take that time. Like, like you know, and I said, it still took a year to do the lighting or, you know, the waste hauler or any of these things that we're doing. So I think the requirement doesn't have to be every single question. The requirement could be that maybe the broader questions of what is the problem we're solving for. And then the questions there under that could be left to the committee with as suggestions you know, whichever ones you want to answer or not, but maybe the higher level kind of checklist, which is what we have in CRC as well already. Um, and I think, and I know what you said about this competing things, that was one of the obstacles and suggestions I had was balancing diverse perspectives and needs and competing needs. And that is all the more reason why we need a thoughtful process where we are really putting out the different points of view um, so one of the proposals I have then is we look at this and see that can we maybe agree to the higher level and we can decide whether at the end, whether we want to make it required or not and all of that. But in terms of the instrument itself or the process itself, can we agree to um, what we think should be required or is most important out of this. Can I ask, can I clarify, Shalini, when you said yeah. the process itself, mm -hmm. what specifically are you talking about? So this process includes like the committee who's discussing this and whether it's a town council or, you know, like Andy said, oh, maybe the, the page five of the document that you sent. Yeah, the checklist. Is, Articulate yeah. the problem, tailored question. Yeah. So, I mean, right. Page so I'm I'm, I think I'm struggling because what we're seeing on the screen is different than the. the I know. We should. Back end, and so I'm not clear on what we're just. The checklist. I think the checklist is the steps, basically. That's why I was just sticking to the checklist because. But uh, you know, if you want to put up the. <laughs> if you want to put up the. Uh, should I do it? Can I do it? Or. Do you want me to put up the checklist or the whole plan? I think the plan number four. I did simplify after the plan number four. Yeah, and if you can go down. Oops. So if you go down to, yeah, let's just, let's scroll through the purpose. Yeah, if you go through, like some of the problems that people mitigate, delays, conflicts, some of these things, especially in, other issues that are more involved, like zoning and stuff, you know, where, if we can find, create a process where we are engaging people earlier in the process, increasing awareness that, hey, the town council is talking about this. And trust me, I know I have been to the housing buildings with Darcy in the first round where we went and had our on uh, district meetings in the apartment buildings. And even then only three people showed up. I went and knocked on people's doors. Hey, we're having, and we sent the management. The management put up notice that your district councils are gonna be coming. We coordinated with the management and everything. And even then three people came. And so, and when I spoke to them, they were like, yeah, we're just too busy. And, you know, people are disconnected. They don't care. They don't have the time. They don't even know why they should care. So there's a lot. So 
in parallel, that's why I wrote in the community engagement how we can increase some of the, that's one of the obstacles and how we're gonna increase it is what this uh, community participation officers are already doing by hosting all these different community events I need, and I think the counselors showing up, you know, at least some counselors showing up for all of these different events is another way for people to build trust that these are your local representatives. And so making sure that at all of these events, we are announcing that, hey, we represent you, we are here for you to take care of your needs and so forth. So I think that's on the side, that's an important piece of building that relationship with the community and getting them more involved. But in terms of the process itself, um, moving down a little bit more, I think now, um, we can move down. This is more just the background human-centered approach. These were some of the, we can anticipate these are gonna be some obstacles. How do we even reach the different stakeholders who are disconnected completely and so forth. And the more we can start utilizing our connections with, the community leaders and nonprofits and so forth. It's not gonna be perfect at the get-go. It's just like we're setting an intention to do it in that way. Okay, balancing diverse, I've already spoken about that, moving down. Managing expectations, I think that's another thing. People keep, you know, many people like, oh, the community, the council is not doing, it's not transparent, it's not doing enough job for community engagement. But I think even just putting it out there that we had this conversation and we tried and six people came to that listening session. So we had a listening session and we have trying to do our best. And so maybe utilizing some of the channels like Amherst Indie or Mass Live or Gazette, but not as paid, but more can they do a piece on it that the town is working as an article or something, you know? So those are just some ways we can try to. So is this the checklist? No, this is not the checklist. This is just the explanation. These are the, op this was the purpose of why this plan is good. This is some obstacles we can anticipate. And right, no, I, I mean, I read this in the packet. Yeah, I just... yeah, okay, okay, okay. So going, yeah, okay. So time and so going forward, you know, the checklist is just that, okay, the, oh boy. That looks weird. Okay, yeah, because I've got knocked out. Okay, so this is the community education process. And this is the step one, two, three, four, five, this. So this is the process. And the checklist is basically under each of these, there are the suggested questions. It's the same, this whole thing is just in paragraph form and then I condensed it into a checklist. So that's the thing I mean, we can just go all the way down to the checklist, perhaps. So what you're saying is that you're not asking for all of those questions to be required. Or you are mm -hmm. asking for all of no, those. Oh, no, no, no. These were suggest the questions that's what is explained above in it or somewhere is that. The questions are just suggestions that here are some kind of questions you can ask. The main question though, that I would like every committee or sponsor or town council to answer is what is the problem we're solving for? And then how we, and these are some questions below that can help us answer that question, but every committee can choose to, maybe we just do a single thing. The town staff needs it or like speeding, like speed bumps is like, yeah, we've heard a lot of problem, you know, is safety issues around vulnerable populations. So it can be a simple answer. Do you, feel, do you feel that folks have brought things forward where they haven't clarified the problem that they're trying to solve? Oh, uh, that happened in the rental registration, re blah, 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 rental re blah, registration bylaw where we went back and forth several times because we started off with this is what we're doing, but then what they were suggesting, and the, at some point it broke off into nuisance bylaw and the rental registration, and because people okay. were like, yeah, so no, no, that's not what we are solving for in this bylaw, but that's an important question that we can, so it, yeah. And then this helps to design the 
community engagement, whether it's a survey or whatever, is that we're not asking all possible questions about everything, but focused on questions that will help us make policy decisions related to the problem we're solving for. So, okay, so my recommendation was, can we adopt the main questions like step one, what is the problem we're solving for? Scrolling down, step two, what do we know and not know? And so this will make sure that we are drawing upon, like there's so much, like we did the charrettes and whatnot with the community engagement around the de downtown development, whatever. Or in different situations, we have these older consultant reports and whatnot. So this is just making sure that we have documented everything that's already done so we don't repeat what we already know. So what do we know and not know is about that. Do maybe, do we need to engage the, see, there's that question for you. Do we need to engage the community? It doesn't sound good because we, and, and I remember you saying, of course we have to, we have to engage the community. That's not even a good question. However, there will be points where we don't like, especially if it's a simple, maybe we don't say, do we need to, but what is the level of engagement with the community? Because even having an, a public comment is, an opportunity to engage. So it's not like we're not engaging, but it's what is the level of community engagement we need? Uh, can I ask a question? Sorry, just, mm -hmm. just Yeah, no, no, go for it. So what form do you see this taking? Is this something that you see as a format in a memo that folks bring forward? Mm -hmm. Is this something that I, I, I'm, I'm still stuck on how we adopt this, not as a rule of procedure. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and I, and maybe I guess I'm looking for guidance on Athena from Athena, Athena. Um, Athena. of yeah, wouldn't yeah. this be part of the rules? Thing. Wouldn't this be part of the rules of procedure? Sorry, Athena, I can mm -hmm. wait until you're until you're ready. No worries. Um, the um, it could be adopted as a policy. It doesn't have mm -hmm. to be a rule. If um, it's just a series of questions that that the committee is recommending the council put into um, like the requirements for committee reports. Mm. Um, that the, the, those questions be included in committee reports. That would be one way of approaching it. It could be mm. a separate policy, um, but if it were to yeah. be a rule, then you would want to recommend like a specific, you know, we want to insert these words into the rules of procedure um, so that it's really clear to the council what action you're, you're recommending they take. Thank you. Shalini, I think my my current stand on this is, uh, and then I'd love to hear from the other committee members kind of where they're at right now. I, mm -hmm. I think that what you've designed it would be really good to share with counselors as general thoughts and oops, sorry, I think I just froze. No, we uh, can hear you. Oh, okay, sorry, my I froze on my end, so I'm glad. <laughs> um, it seems like this would be, in my opinion, a good thing to share as general kind of ideas for best practice, but I'm really struggling mm -hmm. with the idea of making this a required policy for all of the reasons that have been stated, but because these questions are so subjective and broad, and they need to be right for by the nature of this design, but mm -hmm. I, I I don't see how I, I guess I'm really struggling to see this put into a systematic practice the way that it's illustrated now. Um, and I am I'm gonna keep thinking on it, right? I, I mean I read this prior to the meeting. I yeah. need to put thought into it, but um, right. I guess I'm curious to hear from Dorothy and Andy, and then I do want to uh, wrap this up the next five minutes because I know we have a couple other yeah. things. To leave. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm curious to hear from Dorothy and Andy kind of what, what you would, where you would like to see this go um, in terms mm -hmm. of where, what changes do you think need to be made? It, do you think changes need to be made? Um, et cetera, et cetera. And do, and, and again, what is the problem we're trying to solve for by implementing mm -hmm. this process? Um, Dorothy? Well, the question list is a much shorter piece of work than the full mm -hmm. report. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, I agree that it should not be a requirement. Uh, one of the reasons is when I said before consultants, uh, consultants, mm -hmm. there is the premise, whether it's true or not is irrelevant, that they are totally objective and that they will reach the quote, whatever the truth is, right? Um, a town mm -hmm. council, we are representative. And that means that we may not all agree on many of the ideas or concepts that we come up with. Um, so we can't I, I we can't necessarily say to come to agreement on all of these would just take too much time. But I do think that they're really a good list of questions. So um, 
the uh, more kind of concise form of the questionnaire. Um, now, Anna said for breast practices, um, I think I think it should be you know something disseminated in the com in the com uh, committees to say these are some some thoughts and ideas. It's pretty thorough that we may want to look at and think about before we deliberate. But I wouldn't go more specific than that because I do believe that decision making really is an art, and that each of us come and bring other things, and that's why we vote. We, you know, we we very rarely, well, not very rarely, but on certain issues, we don't all just wait till we have a sense of the meeting or the Quaker, everybody agreeing. We go ahead, mm -hmm. we've got business to do, and the vote has, you know, it's going to go or it's not going to go, right? So I'm very positive about your work here, but I don't think I want it to be a required checklist. So that's my thought. Mm -hmm. Andy, do you have anything you'd like to share? I think that I'm uh, in the same place that Dorothy just said it. I'm not comfortable making it a required checklist at this point. I mm -hmm. think to give a lot more consideration to the consequences of doing that. And w if we did, when it would apply, there are things that uh, has been pointed out that we are required to, to address and we don't ha really have a choice. Um, they usually come up uh, to most frequently, it seems in DPW's realm, because whether it be, uh, or planning for that matter, flood mapping is another one. I mean, we had to do mm -hmm. flood mapping, right. it like it was a discretionary thing. Mm -hmm. um, the same with uh, um, some of the stormwater um, regulations that the federal government was requiring of local communities. Mm -hmm. uh, those were just things that had to happen. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I, I, I think we really need to give some consideration uh, to uh, if we had a checklist, when the checklist gets used and mm -hmm. um, for uh, what, you know, what purpose. And I, and it, mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, I think that the uh, entire piece is very helpful because it's worth sitting down. It was worth my sitting down, and I think it would be worth everyone sitting down and thinking about what community engagement is about. And I think this has really helped formulate that thinking uh, in a way that we haven't uh, really dealt with before in an organ in this organized a fashion. Thank yeah, you. and thank you, Andy. And I, I think that. The question, what is the problem we're solving for that supposed to then tell us whether we go to the next steps, like are there any legal or regulatory requirements, or if it's coming from the staff and other resources to deal with this issue. So the first question itself is supposed to give an indicator whether we need to pursue the rest of the checklist or not. So it's not like in every case we have to answer every single question. The main question is like starting with what is the problem we're solving for and where is it coming from? Is it the staff who's saying flood blames or a legal requirement? We have to adhere to this. And, and then, and then like Andy, as you pointed out, I think it's important to give that set of questions maybe to the town council that before they assign it to the committees to go through that process. So I think that's one big takeaway for me is like maybe we move some of these questions and then maybe I can send it to GOL because that would be maybe under their purview uh, to look into something like that. So I can take this and send it to either Lynn or GOL, whatever, to look at how that can be incorporated as a decision-making tool. And then in terms of what I would ultimately hope to see is not the exact eight questions under each, but just that the committees are acknowledging like what is the information we have and not have even just that. Like, I think that's part of a normal process we all should be having. If you're not doing this, then someone is doing it, right? The sponsors are doing it generally. Like, what do we know? We look at other bylaws. So just documenting like, hey, I looked at San Francisco. I looked at Arlington. I looked at these different cities. And this is where I'm getting this information from. So just having a robust documentation of what we're doing and not repeating things. But I think the bigger question for me is definitely the what is the problem we're solving for? Because that guides the rest of the agenda and then 
who is being impacted? And in that sense, like which are the committees that we need to approach and having a system, even if we don't agree with everything else, I think for TSO and all the committees, we need to have a very logical way of reaching out to, not logical, but a official way of reaching out to committees and then acknowledging and sending them a report back. Thank you, Shalani. To so be continued. <laughs> that sounds good. I'm happy to, yeah, I, I think it sounds like where we're leaving this is that it might make sense to break it up into a couple parts. Mm -hmm. um, I, but I, I think that the question of committee engagement is is almost could be its own separate question um, because I think that sometimes we have committees, sometimes we have residents who aren't on committees and yet mm -hmm. what we want, right? Sometimes yeah. experts. We, mm -hmm. we get, well, experts are not, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I think that gets to the question of, I mean, I'll, I'll point to one of the one of the residents who's had a, a lot of significant input into policies um, that I've been working on, isn't necessarily an expert in that field, but mm -hmm. has a lot of lived experience. And so I think we need to be careful how we define expert, um, mm -hmm. which was my point earlier. And so I think um, it, it, it sounds like it might be something that you bring back either to TSO or you bring to the council to refer to GOL as a recommendation for a council mm -hmm. policy on um, on engagement generally. I don't, I, I mm -hmm. you have a different motion that you wanted to make tonight. I will, I mean, I'm not necessarily, I'm not comfortable voting on the motion that was presented. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to make it that's your absolutely your prerogative. No, no, no. We, I mean, that was just to get us started, but I'm hearing different things and I'm happy to speak with, like bring this to Lynn and see if she wants to send it to, or I don't know what. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll, <laughs> okay. Break up. Um, um, part of. So are you saying that you're going to, you're going to bring it back as a, as a rule change or as a policy? I think that definitely not a rule change. I don't want it to be complicated or anything, but I was just thinking that the first part that Andy was suggesting that that could be a set of questions that the town council can use in deciding whether a proposal goes to a committee or not. Because right now we're just sending all the proposals, mostly they end up going to committees. So this could be a process of finding out from the town and the staff and you know what, how much, um, bandwidth does this town have to take on this project and where can we put it on the priority list? Because everything that everyone's bringing is important, but it's just, is it a priority? So I Sorry. I can speak with you, Athena, afterwards, if you, that would well, be Well, I'm just, helpful. I'm wondering what you'd like the committee to do at this point and where you'd like to mm -hmm. take it afterwards, okay. because if it's, yeah. if it's something that you want GOL to consider, then that's not really their realm to get into a substantive discussion about outreach that's really uh so that it is it, 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 so I'm, yeah. I'm just trying to figure out um if Thank you want to do something okay. with it tonight or if you want to just folks to think about it and talk about it again next time mm -hmm. or right what? so i think what would be helpful is one i will definitely reach out to the first part which andy said to lynn and ask her if that's something how do we bring that into council for consideration before sending out that's just part one of that checklist that question one so you'd like that that first set of questions to be considered by the council before or at the time that they decide to make a referral yes so is that something you'd, right. you'd like the com this committee to recommend the council take up oh so yeah i don't know is uh, because can I, oh, sorry mm. Go ahead. is this something shalani that you're bringing up as a uh, a committee member or was this referred to us through the council i think that's what i'm also i'm stuck on that a little bit too of like how to mm -hmm. you, see it's the... coming up yeah see it's coming up what is the problem we're solving for and where did this come from and no, I'm clear uh, on that. i mean yeah. I, I understand the problem that you're referencing but i think yeah committees we we typically have a process for how we as committees deal with things and so i'm just trying to figure out yeah how it got to us are we supposed to report it back to council or if it wasn't referred, should it be referred to the committee before the mm -hmm. committee spends? We've spent substantive time on it. Right. And yeah. yeah. Um, if I if I may, Anna. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Athena, go ahead. Um. So it's it's part of the committee's charge to make right. recommendations to the council regarding outreach. Um, it's it's in your name, and the mm -hmm. Andy Andy can tell you that the previous iteration of TSO 
didn't have capacity to really address that part of this committee's charge. So my understanding was that Shalini was bringing it to mm -hmm. this committee as part of the committee's outreach um, right. side of their work. So um, in my mind, it would seem appropriate if the committee wanted to make a recommendation to the council that they mm -hmm. consider those questions beforehand. But again, you know, just just recommending that the council think about those those questions before voting on a referral is sort of a nebulous action uh -huh. to take because you're not right. adopting something formal. You're not you're right. not codifying it in a rule. It's just think about this thing. So mm -hmm. um so if if you want to chat before the next TSO meeting and see if we can kind of come mm -hmm. up with something that the council can act on, if that's what you're yes. trying to do, then we can talk about that um, before the next meeting and we can take this up again. Mm -hmm. Christina, does that Thank mean you. Thank you for that clarification. Does that mean hypothetically that TSO could just start talking about any town service without getting it referred to us and advise the council on it without getting a referral? So in the committee's charge, it says advise the town council on matters that broaden participation and ensure regular and transparent communication and outreach to residents of Amherst. So it's pretty mm -hmm. specific about what that entails. It's not like just talk about any town service. It's it's about communication and outreach to residents. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the I think I'm looking at the purpose, not the charge. Right. So in the charge under mm -hmm. right under the purpose, the very <laughs> I, so um, on the website. There, has the purpose and I had to I had to look good look oh, yeah. there's a link to the actual charge yeah. yeah so um okay. so under the the charge section of the charge the TSO right. shall and then there's a town resource town services right. section and then it's the for, first bullet in the outreach and community relations section right okay and Andy because, I didn't mean to speak yeah. for you I just figured you would remember um, right it and thank you so much for that clarification, Athena, in terms of what we need to do and all. But can I suggest that we we think about two aspects of this? The first question is, can we, would y'all be willing to make some sort of a recommendation of recommending to the town council to adopt this first set of questions before uh, sending things off to the committee? And then the second thing I'd like to invite y'all to think of just the broader level of questions to look at that. And then the rest of the questions can be, we can offer them separately as a check, as suggested questions, but just look at the broader questions, the five questions that we have, what is the problem? Who, what do we know? Who's, who's affected by it? And would you be willing to suggest that as a set of questions that all committees look through? Because I have heard from several committee, other town committee members and the public that there is a lot of confusion about how we're handling things. So I'm not just making this up for the sake of making it up and because I love design-centered thinking or human-centered approach, but I think this is something we need to, we're still a new form of government and to create processes, not to make them cumbersome, but actually to streamline things. I'm gonna create the list of channels, tools so that it becomes faster. So I think, yes, yeah, streamlining sounds great. Um, I want to take a couple questions and Athena will, I'm going to defer to you first and then Dorothy. So Athena, go ahead. Uh, please let Dorothy, she's been waiting. I know. Dorothy, thank you for being patient. Go ahead, Dorothy. So I do think that the clarification uh, of the role of TSO is important. We certainly did acknowledge, uh, I think I've been on this committee twice, that we hadn't really done it. Uh, however, I agree with the comments that we, that requiring it would present some insuperable um, problems for many committees. But I think it does behoove us to suggest that this is an instrument that you can use as you wish. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's a great checklist of questions and go through them. And I'm, I, can't, I can't believe any committee would not find one or two things which they hadn't thought of and say, ah, I think we should do this but that still leaves it very much in their hands. So mm -hmm. we're giving them a tool and they decide how to use it. And I think that could right. be very right. nice. They would be, they would be grateful. Thank you, Dorothy. Mm -hmm. um, I happen to mm -hmm. agree with you. Um, mm -hmm. All right, so I do wanna wrap this up, Shalini. What do you need mm -hmm. from the committee in order to move forward? Uh, so I will come back with what I've heard and break it up into two different motions for two different things. Okay. And we can pick it up and then. 
another meeting. And meanwhile, I really encourage you all to read, maybe just go through the checklist because if the whole thing feels really cumbersome and really long, the plan, that's why I made a separate motion sheet in the checklist. So just look at the checklist and see out of that, what do you think would be helpful, not intimidating, but helpful. So we can pin it out, maybe the checklist, we can remove the suggested questions, but it's separate, but just have that higher order questions that this is what, oh, Athena. Thank you. I, it's, I, I got it. Thank you. Um, Athena? Um, I would just ask that if if you have time to meet beforehand, that would be terrific. But I think uh, thinking about what action mm -hmm. you'd like the council to take, because yeah. um, Dorothy's suggestion was, um, I think, for the council to consider those questions. And that's, um, again, a sort of fuzzy, a fuzzy action. So right, if it's right. something that you're asking the council to adopt as a policy or to um, mm -hmm. make sure that there's some sort of report about outreach or, or community engagement and mm -hmm. committee reports, then we would want wording to include mm -hmm. that in the rules. So um, I know that this, <laughs> that's a very hard and fast, we need something to vote on, but <laughs> But you yeah. need something to vote on if you'd like this to be carried forward from right. council to council and, and not just presented right. like, think about these things think and about. as you right. do your work, which I, I agree that it's terrific yeah. and um, and would be really useful. But in order to sort of codify that into a, a, a formal thing yes. that, that exists within the town, then we should do that mm -hmm. in a formal way. Yeah. Yep. Just Thank you very much. Okay. Last last thing ironically it's community engagement and we're not doing any community engagement around this plan and getting <laughs> feedback from people um but you know i think that's another reason that we should sh like maybe send it out like you know we can send this package to other people that we know in our community and get feedback maybe i don't know yeah i mean do um, you want to do you want to wait until we've kind of settled on like the two pieces of it and then oh, totally yeah. yeah and meanwhile I will try to send it out and if you all want to share it with because it's I don't think we I really want us to get feedback and I want it to be manageable I've been in this position so I don't want it to be cumbersome of course but let's just stay open to different things and see how we can streamline it and make it minimal but useful thank you uh Athena one more quick thing. I'll stop raising my hand. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, I would suggest that, um, Anna, if you're going to be writing the committee report for Monday's meeting um, with the recommendations on the town manager appointments, uh -huh. that you could um, include a link to the engagement plan and, and mm -hmm. um, include that in your report to the counselors so they can take a look at it and give any feedback Ooh. to PSO before your next meeting. Sure thing. Nice. Thank you. All right. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, thank you, Shalini, for the uh, robust presentation and looking forward to the continued discussion. Definitely great questions in there. Um, we do not have the approval of the minutes uh, tonight, but we will have those next time. I do not have any announcements other than that uh, Anika will be back at our next meeting. Does anyone have any other announcements? Yeah, Shalini. I saw your actual hand. It's okay that you can. <laughs> okay. Uh, so wait, there were conflicts with two potential dates in the future, or at least one, at least, where the League of Women Voters. Um, okay. And so can we do a survey? And I know Anika is not here, so we can't do that now, but we may have to shift. And because I, we really need all the... TSO meetings and can't cancel anymore. So yep. So I believe that the uh, League of Women Voters has changed their dates of their forums. Oh goody. Yep. Okay. So they have moved them, and this is a good announcement. Okay. Um, okay. That October fifth at seven p.m. will be the town council district candidates, and at eight p.m. will be the town council at large candidates. October twelfth at seven p.m. Mm -hmm. will be the library trustees and the school committee trustees. So this should have resolved okay. the conflict with uh, town council committee. Okay. Okay. Thank you for raising that. Mm, okay. Yep. Does that work? It's good. Yeah. Uh, Dorothy. Okay, that was so fast. Um, going October twelfth. I have. Yes, and I believe this is sent out, but I will. Re I will repeat it slower. The PSO is a meeting. At the same time, you have the library candidates. At seven p.m. Yes, unfortunately, but you cannot do both. I do not arrange the League of Women Voters um, forums. I believe that they shifted it because before this 
it was supposed to be town council candidates um, at that date. And so they switched them so that the town council okay. candidates are now October 5th at 7 and 8 p.m. And the library and trust uh, library and school committee candidates are October 12th. Right. What if I wanted to go hear my husband and it's a TSO meeting? Then you may have to be absent from TSO that day. Okay. Um, but I, I would recommend, uh, I would reach out to um, Sue Lowry, Susan Lowry is who um, I received the emails from. I believe she was the one coordinating uh, the, the League of Women Voters events. Um, but that is the, I believe those were the days that they were able to reserve the room that they're going to be in. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, unfortunately, our, our TSO calendar has been has been set for a for a while now. Um, but hey, on the upside, this year we don't interfere with block party. So um, block party, <laughs> that's a good announcement, is the yes. 21st. Um, block party is September 21st in the evening. Yeah. Um, it'll be downtown. It is looking like it's going to be a, a pretty incredible event. So lots of local restaurants. Um, if folks missed it today, we celebrated the opening of White Lion Brewery. I am personally just very excited oh. that Amber's in the brewery downtown again. Um, I was reminiscing over going to ABC as a kid with my family, um, but I never got to partake in any of the ABC mm -hmm. when it was downtown. So, um, because I was a wee child. <laughs> anyway, um, those are my announcements, breweries and block parties. Uh, any other announcements from other folks, things coming up that we should know about, Dorothy? Well, the um, UMass had a um, kind of student street fair for the mm -hmm. students and residents on Fearing Street. And uh, despite a very slow start, it ended up being very well attended, um, good pizza. And by the time I left to come here, uh, the music had gotten quite loud and it seemed to be everyone was having a good time. But there were some lo lovely young people, students actually went out and sought engagement with um, us residents which Love was very interesting. And Paul showed up there too. And so was Jennifer Moist and, and Cress was there with a good at attendance. And so it was, it was pretty good. I think it was a lot better than last year's. So mm -hmm. the young guy, Joseph Maspo, perhaps mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. had really worked hard. He had gone, he knocked on every single door and he'd really, really had worked very hard getting that thing set up and he had some good people. He works so, at UMass or is he? A mm -hmm. He's UMass. Yeah. yeah. And he's been That's doing it for a couple of years. And I guess, you know, sometimes you keep doing it and after a while they show up. He, he used to be a COVID ambassador, then oh, went over okay. to UMass. Okay. okay. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Thank you for that um, that update. Anything else? All right, folks, we got a marathon of meetings in September, so I will see you all on Monday. Uh, bright all right. The... Thank you. Good job with the meeting today. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, right. have a good day, everyone. The meeting is adjourned at 838. Thank you.